Hello and welcome to project number one in the Python tutorial series. That's right, uh, over the past several weeks uh, we've done a series of 10 lessons and I think 14 videos on just the introduction to Python and the basics of programming and hopefully you've learned a little bit about how to program along the way. Uh, I think everyone should be ready if you haven't done so already to attempt your first actual game, your first actual project from start to finish. Uh, this is the same beginning project that I have my students do in class and it's just a simple guess the number game. Very similar to what we did in the while statement and if statement lessons, we're just going to turn it into a fully featured game from start to finish. So this project is going to challenge you to use all of the functions and concepts we've used during the first 10 lessons. If you're unfamiliar with any of them, you can go back and look at them again. Um, this includes things like stream form, string formatting, the while statement, the if statement, assigning things to variables, converting strings to integers, and things like that. And while it may be a very simple program, one of the things that I always advise people to do is make the project your own. Put your own flair in it. Um, certainly, you know, Use this as a guide to write an interesting program and to make sure that you've learned the concept, but make it fun, make it something that you yourself would enjoy playing, and maybe you're certainly not making a, you know, Skyrim or you know, the next Dark Souls, but make sure you're writing a program that's interesting and fun and something that's, that you're into. Uh, I think everybody has probably played the, a count the number game. Usually there's two people and you play higher or lower. The first person selects a random number. So let's say I were to secretly select the number seven, then I would say pick a number between one and 10. You'd take a guess and you may guess the number three. I would tell you that that number is too low and have you guess again. You might select eight after that. I'd say, now that number is incorrect. Go ahead and pick a number that is lower, eight is too high, you select seven and then I tell you congratulations, you've won. And that's really all the program is. No more difficult than that. And as fun as that sounds, one of the big problems with the guess the number game is you need two people to play it. It's impossible to play the game by yourself because you can't guess a number and guess your number at the same time. That is where programming comes in because we're gonna use the computer to generate a random number and use that as the basis for playing the game. Um, some of the things that you're going to want to do, you're going to want the computer to randomly pick the, pick the number. You're going to input your guess into the console onto the screen, and the computer will let you know if the number is correct or not. And then the game will try and keep track of how many guesses you've taken, and if you guess too many times, you'll lose the game. If you don't really know where to start, um, I suggest the basic rules that I have listed at the bottom of the screen here, have the computer select a random number between 1 and 20. Have the computer ask for the user's first name, and throughout the program when you address the player, try and use their name, just store it in a name variable, and when you refer to them, um, instead of printing player, print their actual name. Have the computer prompt the user to input a number, and then the user is going to input a number, and the computer using if statements will respond with higher, lower, or correct. If the user is correct, the computer will list the number and tell the user how many guesses it took, and if the user takes too many tries, the game will end and tell the user what the correct number was. And at its most basic level, that is your guess the number project. To make sure that you're using all the skills and stuff that we've done from the first uh, 10 videos or first 10 lessons in this series. Um, take a look at your pro the project requirements for this project. When you're done, look at this checklist and ask yourself, have you used a print function to display information? Have you used a variety of input functions that take information from the user? Uh, have you used variables to store important information, such as the number of guesses taken, the correct number, the user's guess, things like that? Have you used the string and integer functions to convert data back and forth? That's going to be a very important part of this program. Don't forget that when the user enters information, it will be entered as a string 
So if you want to compare a string to a number, you're going to have to convert the user's guess to an integer. That was something we talked about in the, uh, the lesson videos, but don't forget to do that here. Make sure you have if and while statements to do some comparison checking, and don't forget that all-important random module, otherwise you won't be able to create random numbers. Now a lot of you will find this program to be very simple, and I, I hope that it is. We'll get to more involved and detailed programs, but this is a good check to make sure everybody's in the right spot. If you find that you're done with this program really quickly, and you want to spruce it up a bit and add some cool features, uh, I do have some suggestions to make the program a little more personal to you. Um, one of the things that I'll show you in my example program, have the user select a difficulty level at the start of the game. So they can choose between easy, medium, and hard. And in my iteration of this right here, if the user selects easy, they have a certain number of guesses to get a number randomly chosen between 1 and 10. If they select medium, they'll have a certain number of guesses for a number between 1 and 25. And hard will give them a number between 1 and 100, but the total number of guesses they get will adjust accordingly. So the bigger the range, the more guesses they get. And I think I went with 4 on easy, 6 on medium, and 8 on hard. Uh, I wrote this program several hours ago, so I don't quite remember, but that's something you could do to make the program a little bit more interesting. Uh, number 2, have the program ask the user if they'd like to play again at the end of the game, and then restart with a new number if the user selects yes. So you'll put this in a, uh, a while loop that runs the program over and over and over, and then after the user either wins or loses the game, they'll be prompted if they want to play again. Now, I didn't do that in my example program, but that's something you could certainly do to, to make your program a bit more interesting. Uh, have the program keep track of the total number of victories and losses the player has achieved. So you could do this through like maybe a score system. You get 100 points for every game you win and you lose 50 points for every game you lose and it keeps track of a score or just, you know, you've won seven in a row. You can do things like that. Or one of the most interesting iterations of this program that I really like um, and some of my students over the past years have done some really interesting iterations of this have the user select the random number and then have the computer play the game by guessing you know, logical numbers. So if I select a number, say, between 1 and 10, I pick the number 7, and the user guesses 3, it comes back too low. The user may, or the computer would then generate a num random number between 3 and 10. So let's say it generates the number 9. I, and 9 ends up being too high, the next random number should be generated between 3 and 9, and it should work its way down from there. Um, I've seen some really cool versions of that, but uh, you know, it might be interesting to challenge yourself to create a version where you select the number, and then the computer plays the game and records what it's doing. So all those are suggestions. And before I get you started, I will show you the iteration of the game that I did, what I put together and then let you get off and running in creating your Guess the Number game. So what you see on the screen here, this is the uh, Guess the Number game that I kind of cobbled together just to uh, provide an example of what a finished program might look like. <clears throat> you can see up here I, I printed a little uh, menu or a little introduction using some asterisks to give it some flair and some instructions. So in this game you'll be asked to guess a number. The program will let you know if you're too high or too low. You'll have a limited number of guesses, so play smart. So enter your name. I'm going to enter Steve as my name. Thanks Steve. Now select your difficulty level and it prints up another menu. Easy is a number between 1 and 10 with 4 guesses. Medium between 1 and 25 with 6 guesses, and hard between 1 and 100 with 8 guesses. So we're going to start out with an easy game. Um, I haven't shown you how to do error checking yet, so right now this is case sensitive. If they use a lowercase e, m, or h, it won't work. So thank you. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. You have zero guesses out of a maximum of 4. Make a guess. I'm going to guess the number 5. That guess is too low. Guess again, so it's got to be above 5. So let's go with 8. That guess is too low, guess again, let's go with 9. That guess is too low, so I'm going to guess 10. Congratulations, you have 
guesses. Wow, well, look at that grammar error. Uh, might have to do some uh, checking for bugs in this version of the program because it's clearly not ready for release. Uh, you've guessed the correct number. Well done. You have successfully completed the game in only three guesses. I'm going to run this program again. And let's try it with a different difficulty level. So please input your name, Steve. Last time we did easy. This time we're going to do medium. And my message now updates correctly. It says, thank you. I'm thinking of number between 1 and 25 this time. You've taken zero guesses out of a maximum of 6. So let's go ahead and start with 13. 13 is too high. Let's guess 10. 10 is too high. I'm not really good at this game. So I'm going to check and make sure that it works correctly when the user doesn't guess the correct number. I'm going to guess 22. That's four guesses. I'm going to guess 12 again. And this guess should be the last one. I'm going to guess 13. And you have failed to win the game. You did not successfully guess the number in your allotted six guesses. Better luck next time. One thing that I might want to do to make this program a little more uh, helpful is have the correct number printed in that message. I forgot to do that, but I could certainly do that. Um, the computer's number is just stored in a variable called comp number that I initialize when the program starts running. So it would be very easy to print comp number in this message because that's the variable where my uh, information is stored. I'm going to run this one more time on the hard difficulty to give that a test. So my name is Steve. We're guess going on hard thinking of a number between 1 and 100 with 8 guesses. Let's see, 50 is too high. Let's guess 25. That's too high. 13. That is too low, so it's between 13 and 25. Let's go with 18. 18 is too low. Let's go with uh, 21. Congratulations, you have guessed the correct number in only 4 guesses. Um, when I wrote this program, I just kind of print, uh, printed the uh, opening message, the instructions, before any kind of main program loop. I store the user's name in a variable called name. Their difficulty selection was stored in a variable called difficulty. And the way that I made the difficulty work, I have variables called max guesses and max number that are set based on the difficulty choice. So if the user selects easy, max guesses is going to equal 4, and the max number is going to equal 10. If they select hard, max guesses is 8, and max number is 100. And then when the computer generates a random number, it generates a random number between 1 and the maximum number. So if you're, you're going for the difficulty kind of like you've seen in that example, that's the logic of how I did that. So hopefully that'll give you something to get started with and put some effort into and see if you really understand these programs. We will continue on with some more lessons and some more uh, like cool stuff you can do in your programs. Uh, we've got a In the Realm of the Dragon game that we'll be making here shortly based off of uh, a book called Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python. So we'll be looking at that and just all kinds of cool stuff coming up. But take a look at the Guess the Number game. See how it works out. As always, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, send me a message and I will do everything I can help I can to help you. I can help you debug your programs or if you have any ideas that maybe you'd like some help getting into your program, certainly let me know. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, apologies that this is a video that was real heavy on the talking and not so much on the content, but uh, I hope you have some fun with this. Thanks and have a great day.